Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kwang Joo Kim from Korea. Uh, we have uh, four talks in Kansan LED session. First one is uh, uh, sorry, Global Miss Simon, Quantum Attacking FX Construction by Gregory Gill and Alex Bay, and Gregory Kim Talks. Thank you very much. Yes, so uh, welcome back after lunch. Um, okay, <coughs> so uh, I'll talk about uh, quantum attacks on block surface. I'm not going to explain a lot how quantum computers work. Maybe some of the other uh, people in, uh, in the session will do, but uh, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. So quantum attacks on block ciphers, there are basically two things known, and you'll see other uh, applications to symmetric crypto later uh, in the session. <coughs> but uh, the main known things uh, certainly is Grover's algorithm, which tells you that basically on a quantum computer, you will uh, get a quadratic speed up uh, for root force. And um, also uh, known by now and used in several yeah. papers is Simon's algorithm, which is used, for example, to break even and two in linear. So I'll go through the applications uh, briefly of those. So what is Grover's algorithm? What does it do? So basically, it's a very generic uh, search algorithm. So uh, given a function, so this is supposed to be uh, uh, <coughs> a vector space of dimension n, so just n bit strings. A Boolean function mapping n bit strings to a bit, with the promise that there exists a unique x0 a vector, an input vector, which uh, evaluates um, to 1. So this function evaluates zero all the time, except for this one, um, one uh, value x zero that you are supposed to find. And you will think of you have access to this function f as a black box. So what would you do classically? You just to take an input and check if you get a one and not, then you continue until you, you finally find this uh, x zero. Uh, and, and so in the quantum computer, the nice thing is you can do this in uh, square root of the time that you would use on a traditional computer. Grover's algorithm tells you you can uh, find this x0 with f using f as, a, as an oracle in time uh, to the data one. Um, and, and later this was generalized to more uh, to more uh, more general setup where there's maybe not a unique x0 but a set of good states and still so be able to find it with uh, quadratic speed. We'll come back to this uh, later. So how do you apply this uh, to block cipher? Uh, breaking a block cipher. So you have given a block cipher, <coughs> which takes a message m and encrypts it under uh, some key k. And you get the cipher text, then you can easily convert the problem of finding the correct key k um, to this Grover's problem by defining a function f of x, where x is not a key. And you say this evaluates to 1 if um, it's going to map your given messages to the given text, uh, to, uh, to the given cipher text. Uh, so you, you will use some maybe one, maybe more message uh, ciphertext pairs and use them to define the function. Yeah. And using this, uh, and plug it into Grover's algorithm, you, you, you see that basically on a quantum computer, uh, uh, AS128 can be broken in um, 64 steps. Uh, to, to the 64 steps. Still <laughs> 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 okay, so, so, to, to the 64 steps. <laughs> so what's the, the other uh, algorithm I mentioned, Simon's algorithm, what does this do? This uh, is basically finding periods of, uh, of a function. Yeah? So you're given a function f, which um, now takes n bit uh, as input and outputs n bit string. And um, you're, you're given the promise that there exists a, a vector s, such that f of x is always equal to f of x plus s. So where the plus is now, and this is throughout my talk, the plus is x yeah? so, uh, <coughs> so you know that there's like a, it's like a period, but it's not so interesting the period because it's all modulo two. So, but it's still. It's still. Um, and then using Simon's algorithm, you can recover this uh, s in linear time. <coughs> and uh, originally the, the the requirement was uh, stronger. Then you need that kind of this. Mapping is with the mapping f is two to one, so every uh, uh, there it always comes at pairs. Yeah? But uh, it's, it's enough if you index it to the exists such a period, and then you'll be able to find it. 
And this was used uh, to break the even on suicide, and I'll explain in a, in a second how. And then it was also, uh, I think, last year crypto, it was extended to many modes of operation. Uh, which is basically the same idea. You, you, you make sure that your secret is the period. So how do we apply this to, to break Ivan Mansour, and what is Ivan Mansour again? So Ivan Mansour is, if you want, the easiest, the simplest block cipher you can imagine. So you just have a public permutation P and two whitening keys, a post and pre-whitening key. So this is how Ivan Mansour works, and, and classically you can prove that, uh, <coughs> that it's secure up to the first level. So that's uh, the definition of, of my block cipher now. <coughs> and now you can convert this into Simon's problem by defining your function f of x. We should have this uh, period by defining f of x as the encryption of uh, some x. So the blocks are applied to x plus p of x. So p of x is this uh, public permutation. And then you do some calculations, and they actually stop you. There's only a record missing, yeah? so it's not, it's not uh, more complicated than this. So if you plug in things, then you see that f of x plus p0 is the same thing, thing as f of x. And basically, because it's modulo 2, and and so you get the, the key k0 twice. And, um, yes. So that means you now define the function f, which has k0, the key you are looking for, as a period. And this means you can actually find it using Simon's algorithm in, in linear time. Yeah. The big drawback is you, you will need quantum theories for this. Yeah. I mean, compared to the global algorithm, the big difference is, OK, the two big differences. It's, it's actually linear time. So it's completely broken, but then because you have to use the uh, quantum queries on the encryption function using the, the secret key that you are actually looking for. And it's debatable how, how practical this is. One good example where this could actually happen is uh, white box protocol. And you could, if you have a white box implementation of AES, you could certainly uh, implement it on a quantum computer and then query it in superpositions. But this already is like we don't have white box crypto, uh, white box implementation of AES, and we don't have quantum computers, so it does get more realistic. But this is how it is. <coughs> okay, so uh, we can break this into Mansu in, in linear time. So, what's on the right hand side? Just a closing break. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not safe. Nothing hidden. <laughs> the obvious missing thing. <coughs> okay, so uh, now I'm going to do this uh, extra extraction. And uh, the motivation is, is I think, uh, relatively simple. So what I just explained is we can break this one uh, using quantum computers faster, and we can break this one using quantum computers faster. And then the question is, what about uh, combining this? And then what would combining those to be would be just this uh, extraction. So it would just replace P by this uh, block cipher, and then you have whitening keys. That's what you use for DS, for example. I mean, an easy way to get rid of the two small key size for DS is just use uh, post and, uh, pre and post whitening keys, and then this is the uh, construction you, you come up with. <coughs> and again, classically, we know this is uh, secure up to some data um, time complexity uh, uh, bound, so that's a sound cipher. And the question is, can we break this? Can we also attack this? with quantum computers faster than, than usual. OK. And basically, <coughs> because of the two things I just explained, so for one of them, we use Simon's algorithm to break it. For the other one, we use Grover's algorithm. So what we have to do is combine those two algorithms. Um, and now, now we have to have a slightly more detailed look into these quantum algorithms to, to see if this is possible, or I mean, it's possible. Otherwise, this would not have been accepted. But uh, <laughs> I mean, to see how how it's possible. <laughs> so what? Well, how does Simon algorithm work? So I'm not going to go into any details of quantum computers, yeah? but just the you know, high level uh, way of uh, what happens. So as I said, you you will have to implement uh, this encryption of x plus p of x. So for for um, for even and so again, <coughs> you will have to implement this this function uh, in the quantum way, so as a unitary uh, a circuit. And then what happens is you, you run this algorithm, which is depicted here, but I'm not going to explain what it means. And then you're going to measure. Uh, and measuring uh, whatever this means, it means basically that your quantum computer stops and it becomes classical. 
And then what you're going to get after, uh, <coughs> after basically uh, one, one evaluation of this, you're going to get a, 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 a vector x, an n-bit vector x, binary vector x, which is orthogonal on the, uh, on the period. Yeah? So this is just uh, in, a, in, a, in a product. So you get one vector which is orthogonal to the secret k0 <coughs> k you're looking for. Yeah? So this is one linear equation in, uh, in your secret. And actually, you can show that this x is uniformly uh, chosen from all the values that are orthogonal to k0. And there's some additional condition. Basically, it's right, uniform. So what do you do? Um, you repeat, just repeat this until you have not enough linear equations to solve a linear system for k0. That's all you do. Yeah, so you need, and of course, n plus a little bit plus a constant, and you'll get it with uh, very high probability you get a fully defined system, and you can work out it. Okay. So this is how uh, Simon's algorithm works in a bit more detail, and the important thing is this measuring. <coughs> okay. So how does Grover's algorithm work? Again, here's a picture, and I'm not going to explain the picture, just to have a picture on the slide. <laughs> Um, so the key feature is that uh, you, you need some, I mean, this is more general uh, amplitude amplification. So that's a generalization of, of uh, global algorithm. So what you, what you need is a quantum algorithm that has some initial uh, success probability. And it could be just a uh, um, uniform uh, distribution of, of the results. Huh? So this doesn't have to be big. It's good if it's big, but it's not important. And then you will have to define an efficient quantum uh, algorithm that, that decides if, if, you, if it's a good state or a bad state. So if you're looking for, and what you try to do is you, you want to uh, amplify the, uh, the probability that you measure an interesting result. Yeah, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about. But, uh, <coughs> so this is what we need. We need something to, an efficient algorithm to identify the state we're interested in. Uh, because we have to flip the phases of <coughs> And then what happens at the end is you get running time uh, 1 over s square root of p and repetitions of this uh, algorithm, and you will measure a good state with overwhelming probability. So this is the, the basic thing. OK. So now um, I'm explaining this because I want to explain how we can combine these two things. <coughs> so one problem is that, um, going back, um, so we, we have maybe two problems, maybe one problem. We are not allowed to, to measure during this, uh, all these uh, repetitions of this algorithm. Yeah. So one initial idea would be to use um, <coughs> Simon's algorithm for this uh, algorithm A. That's an initial uh, try, but the problem is Simon's algorithm normally measures, and then the whole thing collapses to the classical state, and, and Grover is not going to. So we have to work, find a way to, to avoid this measuring uh, while doing this uh, Simon's algorithm for finding the period. And I mean, the, the idea is also uh, relatively straightforward. I think you, you don't do what happens in Simon, remember, you, you run, run once and you get one uh, linear equation uh, in the key. Yeah? So you have to repeat it n times to get n plus something times to get enough linear equation to solve it. And so instead of doing this sequentially as traditionally in Simon, we just do it in parallel. And then, again, you use the linear algebra to compute this uh, key k0. And then you can check against the message surface experience and flip the distance. So this, the basic idea is run it in parallel. And then you can combine. How much time do you have there? A lot, I guess, huh? It's a question that I should go on. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, <coughs> okay so this, uh, this is important. Now. This is the main result is you can combine these things and actually um, the, the, we can time for breaking this at x constructions is the same as if there would not be the whitening keys. Yeah, so the whitening keys do not help at all against this type of adversaries. Yeah? Which is interesting because I mean one of the things you would try to do is because of quantum one, if you want to make sure you, are, uh, you, have, you have a given block cipher and you want to make sure it has the same security against quantum computers, you would like to increase the key size. And one obvious way would be use whitening keys, and, and this result shows this is not the way to do it, because it doesn't help against these type of adversaries. 
you are interested in more details on the quantum computer? I, I'll briefly explain that. <laughs> a bit more. Interesting. I think there's seven minutes. Uh, so I said you run uh, Simon's algorithm in, 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 in parallel. So the next two slides, if you don't know anything about quantum computers, it might be a bit hard. But uh, it's only two slides. Um, <clears throat> so what happens if you run Simon's algorithm in parallel, you're going to get some, some, some quantum state like this, where this is some uh, coefficient, <coughs> which corresponds to the probability of measuring the corresponding probability. You have all possible keys, K2, which is the key here in the middle, all possible, possible uh, guesses for this key if you want, and then you have uh, this uh, S repetitions of Simon's algorithm. And you know that if this first part of your state is the correct one, is the, corresponds to the correct key, then all these values will be orthogonal to the value K0. So if K is K2 prime equals K2, then you know they're all going to be orthogonal to, to K0. <coughs> So and then what, what do we do next? We just compute um, the space, which is orthogonal to all of those. Yeah. So if you're in the right, in, in the right, uh, if k2 prime equals k2, then we know they're all going to be orthogonal to at least our uh, key k0. While in the case where, where this is a wrong key, they're just going to be randomly distributed. And so depending on the choice of s, it's very unlikely that there is any uh, uh, any vector which is often to all of them. <coughs> so we just uh, compute the dimension of this thing, and if the dimension is zero, then we know this key uh, this key is wrong, yeah, because otherwise there would be the k zero which is often to all those. If the dimension is uh, larger than one, <coughs> then we also say it's a bad state. We, this might be a mistake, but it's just for simplification we say okay, we ignore the ones where this is not dimensional, where where this is not dimensional. If it has dimension one. Then actually, there's uh, one unique, it's spent by one unique element, which with good probability is our correct key, k0. Yeah. <coughs> so and then, you, you have both keys, I mean, you have k, k0 and k2 anyway, and so you, you measure, you will, with good probability, get um, the, the correct key, and then you check against the uh, message ciphertext by as before. Yeah, there's, maybe you're, you're missing uh, k1 here. Of course, there is a K1, but you can easily avoid. You just uh, instead of uh, uh, matching against ciphertext, plain text pairs, you mean, uh, against single message ciphertext, you, you look at differences. And then the, this uh, last key just vanishes from the equation immediately. And so it's enough to know these two, uh, two pairs, to th those two keys to check against uh, message ciphertext pairs. So you do this, and if, if, if this fits, then you say, yes, your state is good. And then you flip the face. And if no, you just say the same thing. And then you, you have to work out all the details to see that actually running time is okay, probability is not okay. But the basic idea is this. Yes. Okay, so I'm already at the conclusion. So the main message is uh, this thing in the quantum computer is as secure as this thing. So whitening keys do not buy you in C. Um, and now, the interesting part is, uh, let's look at uh, key alternating ciphers. So what is a key alternating cipher? It's like AES. Yeah? You have the XORs of keys and uh, public functions in, in between. So this would be like AES. So I just said that <coughs> this thing, uh, I just said that the whitening keys are not going to help, right? In the quantum way, they, they, they don't provide any additional security. So basically, if I attack this quantumly, I'm going to, it's the same thing as attacking this, right? So, but then, then now this starts with uh, public permutations. So they actually don't buy you any security, right? So I can avoid those. And then look at this. Okay, I just said whitening keys don't buy you any additional security. So, and then you basically have a polynomial attack on AES in the quantum computer, yeah? which uh, is just not true. Yeah? It doesn't work. Like this. No. So, but, uh, but it looks like. Yeah? I think it looks like it's up to you to find the station. <laughs> okay, so that doesn't uh, work like this. Okay, to conclude, um, or to give uh, further uh, uh, topics that it's worth working on, so I think the most interesting uh, way to continue is look at this key alternating cycles. So, and 
I don't know, I even know what I should uh, expect. Yeah? So either this is a tag, not this one, which doesn't work, but the correct attack. So it's a good topic to, to search for a correct attack. Or try to prove, as we also know classically, classically you can prove that uh, in a generic setting, in an idealized setting, these uh, key alternating ciphers are secure. So it's also worth trying to prove, but maybe it's not true, but uh, prove that that was uh, secure. Or look at other uh, applications of this Simon Grover combination. And that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions or comments? We have plenty of time. Okay. Can you elaborate on why it doesn't work? No, as I said, this is up to you to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Attack is completely in the, I guess, post post quantum world where we implement block cipher quantum, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the first point where where which I, I think. so maybe white box. I'm thinking right. Yeah, I think. Okay. Sorry. I think. A, I mean, it's it's a natural model to consider this quantum CPA. So that's what we want, and then this is basically. Any others? No, I, nobody dares to ask questions because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, makes sense. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are simplified versions of the two um, around the element two which were described yesterday. Uh, the case in which you have the same permutation twice, or the case in which you have uh, k, permutation of k, and k. Uh, did you look at those simplified versions of uh, no, elements? So? No, I didn't look at any. I mean, yes, I tried to, to look a bit. But I mean, the, the basically, okay, now I'm going to say why it doesn't work, I guess. But, uh, <coughs> I mean, the, the basic problem is that you have to, I mean, if you just continue like, like I did, you have to grow by either, or, or you have to choose over which keys you grow by, and then the resulting thing should be uh, periodic. And I, I don't see directly. But I think it's a good idea to start with these as simple as possible, all keys the same, maybe different permutations. I guess this doesn't matter too much. Yeah. As I said, a good topic to work with. Any others? This is small. Okay. Next sense, Kevin.